Once upon a time, there was a legendary friendship between humans and unicorns. It was a friendship between Queen Nebula and the unicorn maiden Emma. The two of them played and confided in each other like kindred spirits. Nebula shared with Emma about the splendid life in the castle, while Emma shared with the Queen about her mysterious planet, Starlight. One day, the connection between them vanished. Since then, no one ever mentioned this friendship again. It's said that Emma lives on a distant planet in a galaxy called Starlight. There, there is only one season throughout the year, and that is spring. The grass, trees, flowers and leaves are always fresh, covering everything in a pleasant green. It is also the home of the Unicorn Tribe. They adorn themselves with smooth fur and sharp, colourful horns. Emma has a daughter named Aurora, who is even more extraordinary. Aurora has a seven-coloured horn and a beautiful coat. She has the skill of riding the wind on clouds with utmost proficiency. This is what worries Emma deeply. Aurora, on the night of the fullest moon, you must leave here. Why is that, Mother? Emma could only embrace Aurora and cry. <laughs> the fateful day finally arrived. As Emma led Aurora out of the house, a group of unfamiliar unicorns attacked. Run quickly! Emma and Aurora ran to the edge of the abyss. The boundary between Starlight and Earth. They looked at each other and made a determined leap into the chasm. As Emma prepared to jump, she was suddenly struck by the unicorn's enchantment. With no other choice, Aurora's mother fought with all her might to protect her. Before taking her final breath, Emma used all her strength to push Aurora away from the planet Starlight and transformed her into a human form. To escape the pursuit of the wicked falling to Earth, Aurora woke up to find herself lying in the middle of a forest, her memories lost. Where is this? Aurora suddenly heard a sound, and it turned out to be a young man who was hunting. The soldiers were wary of Aurora's strange appearance, but this young man was not. I am Liam, the prince of this kingdom. What is your name? Where are you from? I will take you back. I don't know. Then come back to my castle for treatment of your injuries. Afterwards, I will find a way to take you back. Hmm? Upon arriving at the castle, <gasps> Liam took care of Aurora attentively. Huh? Hmm. From now on, I shall call you Aurora for easier address. It was a remarkable coincidence that it matched her name from the planet huh? Starlight, although she had no knowledge of it. I like this name! <laughs> Every day, Liam brought the most nourishing huh? food for Aurora. <laughs> Just be yourself! However, due to the instinct of the unicorn species, Aurora still inhabited some peculiar actions that frightened many. Liam patiently instructed Aurora on how to hold the knife and fork correctly. <laughs> Fortunately, Aurora quickly grasped everything, astonishing everyone. On another occasion, Prince Liam organized a horse racing competition, and Aurora was extremely fascinated. Three, two, one, start! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Aurora, let me teach you how to ride a horse. Hold on to this rein. Let's go. 
the two ventured into the forest, enjoying <laughs> the scenery and engaging in cheerful conversation. Aurora realized that her heart raced with excitement when she was by Liam's side, and Liam felt the same. Aurora, let me stay by your side and take care of you. Aurora was surprised by the sudden proposal from Prince Liam, but deep in her heart, she silently accepted that love. However, something urged Aurora in her mind that she could not belong to this earth. Every night when Aurora fell into a deep sleep, she often had nightmares. Aurora woke up abruptly, tears streaming from her eyes. Why am I crying? What does that planet have to do with me? Who is that suffering woman? Aurora thought for a moment and decided to find the answers. She recorded all the information and images she saw in her dreams. Every day, she would take them out and read in hopes of recalling something. On a beautiful day, Aurora took a walk in the forest and came across an old horse being surrounded by a group of hunters. Without hesitation, Aurora quickly rushed to protect the horse. Involuntarily, Aurora's lost memories appeared before her, through the invisible threads connecting all species. Those memories were awakened. Everything was vivid and clear. Aurora remembered everything, her roots and origins. I must return to the planet Starlight once more to find the one who harmed my mother. Immediately, Aurora revealed everything to Prince Liam, how she had regained all her memories. Liam's face changed suddenly, and he appeared worried. Do not worry, I will find every way to help you return. Mm. That night, eh? while Aurora was tossing and turning, she saw Prince Liam entering the room. What is the prince planning to do? <gasps> what are you doing? I... I... <gasps> Are you planning to take my horn so I can never return to my planet? I will never forgive you! Aurora didn't allow Liam to explain. She wiped away her tears and ran straight out of the castle, heading towards the forest. Above the full moon shone its light directly onto Aurora. She ran and stretched her neck, suddenly transformed into her unicorn form. Aurora approached a mountain peak, leaped up onto a cloud, and flew straight back to the planet Starlight. As soon as Aurora set foot on her beloved planet, she was attacked by a group of unicorns. Finally, you have returned! Ha 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 ha! Capture her for me! In a dark room, Aurora sat and wept uncontrollably. Suddenly, Liam's voice spoke up. Aurora! Aurora! Liam had followed Aurora and clung onto the cloud to accompany her back here. The Unicorn Lord wants to capture you as a sacrifice to the Divine Spirits. A sacrifice to the Divine Spirits? In the past, your mother and mine were close friends. They met regularly. When your mother became pregnant, she came to my mother for help. The child I'm carrying would bring misfortune to the planet. On the night of the fullest moon, the child had to become a sacrifice to dispel the ill fate. Nebula, please help me protect this child. Never let it return to that dangerous place. After that, my mother was secretly discovered by the Unicorn Lord and forbidden from coming to Earth. My mother anxiously awaited news of your arrival, fearing for your health. On the upcoming full moon, a Unicorn Girl will fall into this forest. She is Aurora. Please take care of and protect her in my place. Mother? That's why from the beginning, Liam named her Aurora even though she didn't remember her name. Liam didn't seem like a stranger by Aurora's side. Most importantly, Liam wanted to take Aurora's horn so that she wouldn't have to endure the torment of her past. I'm sorry for misunderstanding you. Let's leave this place.
Don't even think about escaping. Suddenly, a radiant glow emanated from Aurora. She yelled and used her horn to shoot a spell that shattered the prison door. Liam was freed, and Aurora quickly lifted him onto her back, and they ran swiftly. They reached the edge of the abyss, the border between starlight and earth, where Aurora had once escaped from the forces of evil. Should I jump into that abyss once again? Liam is a human, and if we jump from this height, he won't survive. Ha 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 ha! Keep running! The Unicorn Lord cast a spell towards Aurora, and she swiftly rose, retaliating with her horn. But his power was too strong. The Unicorn Lord continued his attack on Aurora, and Liam rushed forward to shield her, causing him to fall from the abyss. The Unicorn Lord laughed triumphantly, exerting all his strength to create a magical sphere to capture Aurora. Prepare for the Divine Sacrifice, Aurora! <laughs> Aurora stretched her neck, kicked her legs, and aimed her horn directly at the sphere. Suddenly, the magical sphere cracked, and all the magic burst out, reversing its effect on the Unicorn Lord, causing him to disintegrate. The shockwave of the explosion was so powerful that it shook the ground causing Aurora and Liam to fall into the abyss. Aurora swiftly reached out and embraced him. Both fell to earth, and Liam gradually regained consciousness. He was in anguish when he saw Aurora by his side. Aurora, please wake up! Liam suddenly remembered the act of taking Aurora's horn. I have a solution! Saying so, Liam took out a knife from his person and transformed Aurora back into a human form. You're awake! <laughs> Where am I? Who are you? Because she saved Liam, Aurora <laughs> lost her memories once again. But Liam was still happy, as he could be mm. with her forever. Aurora no longer had to endure <laughs> painful mm. memories. Allow me to introduce. This is Earth, and I am Liam. The one who has silently loved you for a long time. From now on, let's call you Aurora. The two would <laughs> learn about each other again, fall in love from the beginning, and live happily together forever. <laughs> the story ends here. Don't forget to click the subscribe button for Woe Fairy Tale to discover more wonderful and touching stories. In a faraway tower, secluded in the deepest part of the forest, there lived a beautiful princess. However, it wasn't just her beauty that people <laughs> talked about. It was the four-leaf clover necklace she wore, a magical item that brought success and good luck to anyone who possessed it. <laughs> good luck, is that real? Ah! It's becoming a reality! <laughs> As the story spread throughout huh? the kingdom, those who wanted to change their lives began to search for the princess to steal her magical necklace. However, the castle was so well hidden that after many failed attempts, people began to wonder if the princess in her castle was real or just a legend. Huh? 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 In contrast to the lucky princess, Albedo was an extremely unlucky guy. In fact, he could be considered the unluckiest person in the world. When he was born, his family suffered a tragedy that left them extremely poor. As he grew up, everything he touched caused terrible bad luck. Huh? Huh? Mm. 
Although Alberto was kind and hardworking, fate had other plans for him. No matter what he did, he always failed. <gasps> Is it true? Is the story about the lucky princess real? Whether it's true or not, you won't be able to find her! Give up! <sighs> hey, kid. Huh? Do you want to change your fate? <laughs> hmm? Finally, in desperation, <laughs> Albedo decided to join the Band of Thieves and search for the castle and the lucky princess to change his fate. Huh? Boss! Do you dare take me with you? Haven't you heard of my bad luck? Nonsense! A great thief will never believe in superstition. Understand? That's great! You're really my... brother, huh? <laughs> huh? It's all right. It's just a coincidence. Huh? Let me help. Huh? Huh? You. Huh? huh? Then, Albedo became alone in the forest again. To prove his misfortune, he leaned on a large wall to rest and regain his strength, huh? only for it to collapse beneath him. Through the dust and smoke, long vines huh? cascaded down from above. Albedo huh? stepped into them and was quickly mesmerized by the majestic sight before him. Huh? Huh? Tower, like something from a fairy tale, slowly emerged. Around it was a lush green carpet of three-leaf clovers, stretching as far as the eye could see. Ah! Uh, huh? Catch me quickly! In the final moment, huh? when he had made Vivian feel huh? safe and rely her fate to him, Albedo remembered his bad luck and reflexively pulled his hand away. Hmm. The consequences were there for all to see. <laughs> <laughs> Did you mean to trick me? The princess huh? plans to escape. A stranger has invaded. The princess is leaving. Huh? Um... huh? Follow me. Huh? Of course, the princess's kindness came with conditions. Huh? Let bygones be bygones. You could either help me escape and leave with me, or my mother will find out and give you a beating. I didn't mean it. It was all because of my bad luck. Huh? Hearing Albedo's story of misfortune huh? and woe, Vivian no longer had a grudge <laughs> against him. The two of them traveled through the ancient huh? forest to the town Vivian had heard about. <laughs> Vivian promised that if they successfully escaped the arranged marriage her mother had planned, she would give Albedo a four-leaf clover necklace. Previously, Vivian had been kept captive in the tower, separated from normal life. Every day, she was forced to do mundane chores, so when she saw the bustling fair, she quickly became overwhelmed and eagerly participated in everything. In contrast to Vivian's luck, Albedo not only lost but also fell short, causing him to lose his game board. Despite Albedo's attempts to stop her, Vivian grabbed his hand tightly. From that moment on, Abedo felt incredibly lucky. Together, they won all the games and even helped others. In the dust, a careless girl fell into the nearby deep lake, which made everyone afraid. Even Albedo hesitated, fearing that bad luck would make things worse. Knowing this, Vivian added more luck to Albedo in a very special way. It was also the first time Albedo understood how it felt to help others. Those involved didn't pay attention to that anymore, as they were busy being swept away by the sweetness and warmth that still lingered on their faces. Two opposite people understood what love meant from this moment on. Albedo's uh -huh. kindness even caused the captured huh? parrot to switch sides and become friends with him. Gosh, huh? I already left a trace for the queen when I climbed the tree earlier. What? what? Vivian's mother, who had indeed noticed the trace, found them and took Vivian back home. Guards, punish him. Bring the princess home. 
Vivian begged to let Alfredo leave safely, promising to obediently return to her mother. Realizing that making a fuss now might expose the Princess of Fortune, Vivian's mother quickly led her back home. Go away! Look at yourself! How can a poor man like you bring happiness to Vivian? Forget everything! Huh? Yes, I'm not worthy of her. It was all just a dream, a beautiful dream. Hmm. At that moment, Vivian was taken home by her mother to prepare for her wedding with Richard. Trust me, I understand Richard very well. He will protect and provide a beautiful life for you, my dear daughter. Little did they know that when Mother Vivian had urgent matters to attend to and left the tower, Richard abducted Vivian and took her to his secret base. How could you deceive my mother's trust in you? I didn't want to either, but it was fate that led me here. All because of my unfortunate huh? destiny. Mm. I must find a way to change it and take mm. revenge on those who treated me poorly. I approached you to obtain good fortune, but alas, huh? it wasn't enough. If only I could have that sting of good luck, then maybe things would turn out differently. Forget it! You know mm. that string has been with me since birth, ah. and it cannot be removed! Exactly! That's why I had to bring you to my secret base. As Vivian was being taken away, her parent quickly flew to inform Albedo of the situation. Without hesitation, Albedo followed the parrot to the Valley of Darkness to rescue her loved one. Upon arrival, Albedo saw Richard preparing to push Vivian into his machine, despite her struggling. Huh? Albedo and Richard fought fiercely until Richard's salvation arrived. Huh? Soon after, Mother Vivian arrived, relieved to find her daughter safe and Sam. Please calm down. I have a way to remove the necklace. As long as you let me switch places with Vivian, don't harm her. No, Mom, you can't do that! To make sure they didn't try anything, Richard temporarily held Vivian's mother hostage. Wait for me to start the machine, and then deal with you. Come in obediently. But the light from the machine shone brightly and smoke billowed out. Huh? Despite having obtained the lucky necklace, Richard still mm. failed. What? Why? <laughs> Taking advantage of the opportunity, Alberto <laughs> rushed forward and captured Richard, rescuing huh? Vivian's mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? Everything that happened is my huh? fault. In the past, I was an incredibly lucky person. I was imprisoned by the neighboring country's king because of my ability. Later, I passed on this ability to my daughter Vivian. Taking advantage of the king's mistake, I found a way to escape with her. I was too strict and harsh on her because I was afraid that she would meet the wrong person, be exploited, and suffer as I did. I thought I could protect her for her entire life, until I discovered I was sick. Richard will take care of her huh? if I have to leave. The four-leaf clover is just a rumor due to a misunderstanding. The true source of luck is Vivian. I'm sorry. Mom, I don't blame you. I just didn't understand your intentions. Vivian's mother realized that Albedo was a truly good person and shouldn't be judged based on misconceptions. Encouraged by his future mother-in-law and bird friend, Albedo decided to hold on to his happiness in life. I've always been the unluckiest person in the world until I met you. Perhaps all the good fortune of my life has accumulated just to be with you. Vivian, you are the most beautiful four-leaf clover in my life. Now and forever. 